are globe earthers stupid? What would it take for you to change your mind or to be convinced that you maybe were wrong this whole time? Hmm. Do you think you'd get along with Dan, Creaky, MC Toon if they were your neighbor? Uh, it doesn't stop the stalkers though. I think you were going to get some sometime. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm back with another conversation, and today I'm speaking with Flatzoid. Yo, Flurs! If you didn't figure it out based on the title of the video, Flatzoid is a flat earther and content creator and live streamer on YouTube. We covered a variety of topics, but before we get into that, let's cover some terminology. Alexa, define Glober. Glover is usually defined as a person who makes or sells gloves. Let's try something else. Alexa, define anti flat earther. Anti-puncture reinforcement throughout the tire All right, anyway, we also discussed how he came to believe the Earth is flat, what it would take for him to change his mind and believe we're on a globe, what it would take for me to believe we live on a flat Earth, why anyone would try to keep the shape of the Earth a secret, and other things. Big thanks to Flatzoid for the conversation. He has a live stream show almost every day of the week over on his channel, Flatzoid's Perspective. It's a lot of fun. He's always talking with people in the chat. I recommend going to subscribe to him. Make sure you get notified the next time he goes live. Link will be in the description below. If you enjoyed this conversation and want to see more like this, let me know by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. I really do appreciate every single like and new subscriber. Alternatively, if you didn't enjoy it and I just wasted your time, at least leave me a mean comment. Here's some inspiration. I don't like your jerk off name. I don't like your jerk off face. I don't like your jerk off behavior. And I don't like you. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Are globe earthers stupid? No. No. I'd say a lot of them are dishonest though. Really? Anti flat earthers to be precise. Because there's different. I, I try and categorize in two different things. You get a glober. And I mean, just. Ordinary belief people that believe the globe, they've been indoctrinated. They don't, then they hear it and they're like, oh yeah, I thought, you know, I think about it and they're just gone with their lives. They don't really care. That's to me a normal globe. But then you get the anti flat earthers, you know, like the FTFEs and all of them. They, that, but that's their bread and butter kind of thing to try debunk the flat earth, you can say. Because in my opinion, that there's a lot of arguments that they know it's, it's actually flat, but obviously they can't concede. <laughs> think about it. If you've got a channel, that's large and uh, your whole support system is based upon your narrative debunking the flat earth. You're obviously going to have to keep with that. You know what I mean? So that's why that's I said anti flat earth side, I would say is to an extent, yeah, dishonest when it comes to some things. I'm not going to say all flat earthers are honest either, because if you know me, I've even spoken about a lot of flat earthers, called them out and told how dishonest they are. So. Yeah, you have. And that hasn't gone unnoticed. As you saw, Dan, he said you're quite honest about your opinions on other flat earthers, which, you know, is pretty refreshing. You mentioned <laughs> you think that the globe earthers, which really is only a handful if you think about it. I mean, billions of people on the planet, right? How many globe earthers or anti flat earthers can you name? Not many, right? So do you think, like, because most of the world believe the earth is round or a globe, do you think that everyone is just incorrect? or mostly incorrect, or there's even including scientists and, you know, astrophysicists and everyone in NASA, or is everyone just lying? And there's a cover up some, there's some reason someone's or some people are trying to keep the actual shape of the earth a secret. Now you see how I would uh, picture it is just like, I mean, I can explain it. It's just like us flat earthers. We weren't always just flat earthers. We were also brought up to believe it's a globe and things. I mean, Heck, I still like my sci-fi and I, I was like a huge Star Wars fan, Star Trek and all that. But uh, I just see it in a different light now. When it comes to people like you call scientists or whatever, they believe they're doing the right thing. So I wouldn't say they're lying. I would say it's a very small uh, group of the top echelon, you know, which you know there's the truth and they're the ones lying because they, you don't know, they might be manipulated in a way to think this is better for humanity. You know, this could be better financially you don't i can't i can't divine one's motives for being dishonest or lying anything mm -hmm. but i wouldn't say everybody's lying because that's just impossible when it comes to explaining things like for instance space travel and things you can understand they have compartmentalization so if a person is getting a contract for doing the paint job 
or even the bolts and nuts and everything or wiring even, they're going to believe they're doing something worthwhile. I mean, why would they get a contract, get paid for it if it's not really going to where they're claiming to take it? Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. that's why I said that not everybody's un, uh, saying it's lying, but uh, definitely when it gets to people like the astronauts, I would say, yeah, they 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 have to be lying. I, I understand the vast majority of people on Earth, yeah, like they may be globers, but they don't think about it ever, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just, you know, I guess <laughs> it wouldn't have to be the whole planet that's in on it. Just that just most exactly. people go about their day. So that's fair. Do you think you'd get along with Dan, Creaky, MC Tune if they were your neighbor? I think get along, yeah, but um, agree with them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. Um, because like I said, I do see them as a, a bit dishonest with some things and being anti flat earthers. But uh, I mean, you can even ask Craig. Sometimes we have discussions backstage, which we we cordial with each other. You know, and it's not the same as us making videos of each other, slaying each other off the whole time. Behind doors, we can still at least be proper. You know, respectful. And I. That's the kind of person I have. I can still be respectful with person, even though I don't agree with them. So I can still get along. Have you ever spoken to Dan or MC Tune or Creaky? I mean, you've spoken with MC Tune, I'm, I'm quite certain. Oh, yeah, yeah, MC Tune. Dan doesn't really want to talk with me. He just uh, doesn't talk to Flat Earthers, apparently. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. But uh, Creaky Blinder, he hasn't really attempted to talk. Uh, but yeah, definitely talking to Craig, spoken to, to Mike a few times. So is there anyone you, you haven't been able to get along with on, on the internet? They're just too dismissive or rude? Just when we debate. But like I said, back doors, you know, you can still be respectful. So how's it going? Have a good day. You know, be okay. Mm -hmm. But when you're debating, I think that's when it gets to, oh, you know, just obfuscation and being the slimy self person usually is. So that's about it. You think that's dishonesty or that's passion about their position? I think it's a mixture. You know what I mean? Because we both have a have a different view on things. Like they would see something away, and I would see something away. And obviously, when you're gonna you have that passion, you see a certain way. You're going to see the other person dishonest because you can't understand why can't they see it the way you see it. So I think it's human nature to kind of see it as dishonesty, and uh, just more or less just say, "But you've been in this for long, so obviously you've got another arguments by now." I mean, there's a lot of things that we've spoken about, even like with Craig. We've spoken about over and over, and he would think by now he would get it, but he doesn't. So in my mind, that would be dishonesty because he's willfully being ignorant. Of it. And I'm sure he sees it the same way with me. You just understand it. Right. That, but you're honest, so therefore it's, po it's possible he's also honest and it's just okay. not getting through to each other. Yeah. What do you think about the people who have changed their mind or at least claim they've changed their mind? So I'm talking about Ranty, STST, Rachi. I think I've been very vocal on them. But uh, I'll be more than happy to for your video. Um, Ranty, I would say, is still a flat earther. I would say he would he just actually practically, you know, kind of sold out because he needed the money. He was always struggling financially and things. So it was something that he needed. I do believe that's why he's not really in the whole thing anymore because it might be emotionally damaged, um, hard for him. All the, all the best to Ranty, by the way. I've got no issues with the guy. I just think he's still a flat earther and that's just something he has to deal with stsd he knows straight i tell him he was never flat earther i say straight if you even go look at his channel his whole spiel as being a flat earther looked very uh fake mm. very no passion you know very uh kind of satire kind of thing uh like he would go outside and just take a video of the sun with his balcony and say see my balcony straight so therefore the earth straight uh, flat, you know, stupid stuff like that. I think he used it as a publicity stunt to be able to say, okay, I was an ex flat earther and that's how he grew his channel. Rachie, on the other hand, I think she just goes where, I don't know, she gets the attention kind of thing. I'm not going to be able to say she wasn't a flat earther because I wouldn't know for sure, but uh, how she is now, I would say she's a bit dishonest and troll-like. <laughs> she's, hmm. she's making stuff that's very trollish lately but uh yeah i can't say if he wasn't a flat earther or not what would it take for you to change your mind or to be convinced that you maybe were wrong this whole time hmm i think there's quite a few points that can actually do this uh i would say circumnavigation 
from uh, North and South Pole. But that would have to be like straight perfect surfing navigation. Uh, you obviously get the people that try it, but you see they've done this in 1971 or whatever. But if you look at the route, it's totally possible on a flat earth and they take a hard east. They don't really traverse straight south through uh, through the South Pole. What else? I guess people actually demonstrating you can have gas pressure without containment. I think those are the two main ones, I would say. Gas pressure without containment. How does that prove or disprove the shape of the earth? You see, let's put it this way. You would uh, you would take this based on logic. If you, you, you agree with me that every time we need to uh, measure gas or present gas or transport gas or have gas pressure, it has to have some kind of containment. The globe, though, says you don't need this containment for the gas, which totally goes against every kind of demonstration in uh, in civilization it's since the beginning of time. And uh, it's explained with the second law of thermodynamics that entropy will increase if you have a separate system, if you have a system close uh, adjacent to a separate uh, low pressure system. So what I get now is the argument, yeah, but we have pressure gradients. But not understanding the pressure gradient comes off the first having the gas pressure, and the gas pressure first requires the containment. I'm a firm believer that we are contained, obviously, because I am also a biblical earther. I, I am a Christian, and I do believe in the firmament. So that's definitely one of the holding points to me that says, okay, it has to be contained because God says so. And if we don't have it based on natural law, we can't breathe. Container. So proving that there is no container or proving gas pressure without a container then. Yeah. yeah. Because every time I get, for instance, the anti flat earthers, they want to demonstrate gas pressure without containment. They usually go and show it with containment. You know what I mean? Or just trying to take a funny one, for instance, like Sean Hawkins. He takes a piece of paper and he starts blowing on it. <laughs> and he says, there you go. That's gas pressure out containment. You're like, yeah, Bernoulli's principle requires there to be containment. First of all, that's a surface area. So that's an open container. And you are already in the contained system, just like an airplane is already in the contained yeah. system. It's like taking a fish tank and then taking another, uh, just a container and sticking it in the fish tank and, claim, and claiming there is no fish tank. You know what I mean? Like it's already in the contained system. And that's one thing I'm trying to get through to the to people. And I don't know, it's like a struggle to get that through. You, If you're in a contained system, you can already have the gas pressure there. Now, if you're trying to claim, look, I have an gas in my hand here, but you're already in the contained system, you're mm -hmm. defeating the object. It's already contained. It's, it would, yeah. So that's what it would take to change your mind. All right. That's interesting. Yeah, I'd say that's two main points. Um, so, like you said, you you haven't always been a flat earther. Do you remember the first time you heard the possibility or the concept that maybe the earth is actually flat? Do you remember that? And how long ago was it? Yeah. Well, it was easily, what, seven years, eight years now. With me, it was a bit different because I always, I had a, a way of looking at things because I studied art. That's what I majored in and stuff. So, I, you know, perspectives kind of drilled into me and stuff. And the one day we went down on holiday to the beach and stuff. And I was looking down at the ships and I was looking at stuff and I was thinking, you know, this can all be explained just, you know, with perspective. It's not really something, you know, that was really bothering me. But I did hear somewhere where someone said flat earth, but it, I didn't really watch anything about it. I said, oh, flat earth, you know, the normal kind of uh, thing people take when they see flat earth, they just shrug it off or they go and watch and they laugh. And I didn't even bother about it. I just saw the, so my back mind is like this, what's this flat earth kind of thing? So when I was on holiday and I was looking out, I was saying, yeah, but this can be explained with perspective and all that. And it's like something just clicked in my mind. It's like, maybe I should look into this, you know, something's just off. And uh, obviously when I went home and stuff and then started looking into it more, uh, I was trying to think, yeah, this just makes sense. You know, it's like almost like an overnight transition to me, you could say, a different way of thinking. Obviously, when I started getting into the flat earth, I had to now try and figure out ways to uh, replace things like gravity and all that. But when I was, uh, how can I put it, doing this, I was going in and I was seeing, okay, because 
gravity was so pumped into me. I need something to fall that gives gravity. So I looked into the electric universe and the ether and all that. Uh, if you even go to my channel, you'll see the beginning was mostly I'm trying to find evidence for the ether and uh, electric universe and all that. And I eventually came to a point where I said, hang on, I can't find any real substantial evidence that it actually exists. So I kind of left that kind of thing. And I moved on to now relative density disequilibrium, which I still feel has more evidence for anything. And I really think gravity is more based on the preponderance of RDD. Uh, just like if you get Einsteinian general relativity, if they explain the, the bending and warping of the space time, which causes these things to um, have an apparent acceleration. Although general relativity is in a mathematical construct in the fourth dimension, I think it's just really explaining what's happening in uh, reality, where we are in the third dimension, where the air around the, the object is displaced. So it, it has an unbalanced force. So it can't support it. So therefore it has to seek equilibrium and that's what causes it to accelerate. It's not supported. Okay. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I think it's, it says something that you looked into the electric universe as a potential explanation and then basically realized, no, this probably isn't it and gave up on that or at least said, are no longer convinced of that. So that says something about your belief in flat earth. It's the same thing would have happened if you just found it unconvincing. You wouldn't be doing what you do. I think everybody gets it in a different way. I didn't start on YouTube straight away, by the way. I actually started on Facebook doing that until our, it, I'm not even on Facebook anymore because it, I actually got like a stalker kind of thing happening there. Mm. And I ended up just decided that <laughs> it's weird. So I stopped using you, uh, Facebook altogether that. And then I moved on to the YouTube thing. It doesn't stop the stalkers though. I think you also going to get some sometime. Don't worry. <laughs> You'll get emails from weird people. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's a journey. Let's put it that way. How long have you been doing YouTube now? Yo, five years about. Yeah, I've been, I've been doing, I mean, God, I think I like almost a thousand videos and streams on now. You must love doing the streams. You do it almost every night. Oh yeah, I enjoy it. It's, it's, it's a passion. And I mean, it's something I enjoy communicating, you know what I mean? Obviously it does with the flat earth, there's only so much you can talk about. So I do try and venture into other things like the Mandela effect and things, which I think is also very important to something these days. And I've started dabbing now into dubbing my my stuff in different languages. So uh, I'm starting now to dub my, I want to start a Spanish, a French and a Portuguese channel as well, because I think maybe everybody should start doing that actually to get, you know, to wider audiences. Because if you looked at even the algorithms and the analytics, 70% of viewers are outside of the U S non-English speakers. So think about the new audiences you can get just by doing something like that. 70% of your audience or just in, gen in general? On worldwide. 70% of worldwide of YouTube is really? outside of the US. So, so, And I mean, most of even my views are practically from the US and I think yours as well. So I think for every YouTuber, that's actually a must to look at doing dubbing in different languages to get new audiences. Speaking. My goal is to maybe get mo a lot of Portuguese and uh, Brazilians because I've heard there's a lot of Brazilian flat earthers out there. So if I can get some of them at their attention, I think it can get some great content. Are you fluent in Spanish and Portuguese? It sounds sound pretty good. No? no, that was dubbing. That's AI that did that for me. No way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I actually thought you were speaking Portuguese and Spanish. <laughs> I wish. I, I know me gusta la fiesta. That's about it. We like to party. <laughs> and hola. <laughs> no, but, uh... I speak English and Afrikaans. That's that's me. You're ahead of the game there, then. That's actually a really good idea. You can get your content down in a much better than subtitles to, to have it dubbed like that. That's cool. Because I think it's the future of YouTube. I think everybody's going to do it. So it's definitely time to start. And that's why I'm telling it to you as well. You should maybe think of doing it as well. You think YouTube's still going to be around and popular in 10 years, let's say? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. look when Short started. You saw how mixed up it was in the beginning. They didn't really have a fine structure. Now the shorts are perfect. And the people that started with the shorts in the beginning didn't really have competition. So now they're booming like crazy because they they were the first people getting their audience through shorts. Right. Now with this new uh, thing with uh, YouTube, they're trying to push all the languages on. If you go to Mr. Beast's 
That's why it's got so much different channels because they're all in different languages and stuff. And he's dubbed them in those languages. They're going like crazy. I mean, I, I know a guy, you. he's he's German. He created now a French, a German, and an English channel. He got monetized on his German channel in 12 days just because he wow. took his his English and just dubbed it in German. And you already have all the content. That's that's a that's huge. That's it. <laughs> yeah. It's a really so he's just good literally idea. transferring it. That's a really good idea. Are you just doing this for fun? I know you, you work full time, right? You're not a full time. Yeah, this YouTuber. is my no, this is I work full time. This is my things I do at night when I put the children to bed kind of thing. But yeah, I think I'm enjoying this. I it's not something I'd look at stopping. If it does get to the future where I can say, okay, I can maybe support myself doing this, I'll definitely do it full time. I mean I don't want to spray paint forever because it's actually very bad for a person. And I want to grow old and see my children grow up. You know what I mean? I heard you. I heard you say that once before. Maybe you said it while you were reacting to my conversation with Dan. I was rooting for you. I would love to see you not have to do that anymore. Yeah, I do enjoy spray painting too, but uh, it's just very bad on the body. In your reactions to my video with Creaky and again with Dan, you use that term, divine someone's thoughts or Notice, reasons. Yeah. Just to defend that, we're just doing our best to gauge someone's motivation similar to you just did with STST. Like, it's just, you know, we all have this little built-in lie detector. You know, you can never be 100% sure. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, obviously it's my opinion at the end of the day. Exactly. I'm not telling anybody to just take my opinion as fact. Everybody has their own opinions. I'm just saying why I say that, because mm. you can go look for it yourself. Go look at his channel. You have a way of reading people, and that's just what the what I read from him. My opinion is that the huge majority of flat earthers, and I'm talking ninety nine percent, are very honest and are flat earthers because they believe they're flat. I think that flat earthers maybe over time start to question whether they've been wrong this whole time and. That's a hard thing to to come to terms with when you start to feel that way. And that doesn't just apply to flat earth, you know, religion. There are stories about priests and pastors out there that have lost their faith, their mind, yeah. and, but it's their mm -hmm. whole life. They would lose everybody, yeah. right? It's even much worse for them than it, it can imagine a flat earther, right? So there are definitely, there has to be a few that, mm -hmm. like you said, maybe were never flat earthers and they just said, I'm going to fake it and get some attention. That has to exist. Yeah, but I think doubt is a normal thing. It's human. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, maybe you, even you've at one stage thought maybe you're wrong. I well, mean, not, not, a, not about flat earth, but about, you know, I believed other things that turned out not to be true mm -hmm. and I have to come to terms with them. Exactly. Uh, but, but I must say there's two things I've never thought I was wrong about yet. And that's God and flat earth. It's the two things I've never been more sure about in my life. Wow. Yeah. Well, I've seen too much. Let's put it that way. I've seen very weird stuff that is supernatural that cannot be explained by natural sciences and things. You know what I mean? And that that's what really makes me think that no, there's definitely something out there. And I under, I have an understanding when it comes to Christianity and stuff, it's a relationship kind of thing. If you don't have a relationship in the Holy spirit, you're not going to really understand what, what's going on kind of thing. But yeah, that's a different subject though. That, mm -hmm. But I know for sure that, According to me, it's it's fact. And your flat earth belief is just as strong? Yeah. Look, let's look at it this way. I mean, I was a Christian from a young age, actually. I mean, I think I was a young teenager when I became a Christian. And I was a glow believer. I mean, I read the Bible, everything. And I've never read it in a context of, oh, it's flat earth. Because how the culture was brought up was, oh, you see a globe on the TV, you know, you see everything. If if something happens, it's globe based. So you brought up just by reading. Okay, God separated the waters from the waters, and you didn't really question anything about. It. You didn't question. Oh, God brought the sun on the fourth day, kind of thing. So it was just almost like you blind to it. But once I got into the flat earth and I read my Bible again, I was like, hang on, this makes so much more sense. You know, it just fits more into it, and that's. I think just cemented it more for me because it's just validation, I could say. People have said flat earthers tend to also be conspiratorially minded, right? Did Dan said this mm -hmm. in our conversation. Agree or disagree? Yes and no. Not all. I would say that um, a lot of the 
flat earthers come in understanding things like conspiracies, you know, like 9-11 or the moon landing hoax or kind of things. But then you also get a lot of them that never really bothered with that and they got into it. And then they sort of look deep and realize, hang on, this, you know, this something doesn't sound right. But yeah, I'd say it's a 50-50 kind of thing. It depends on, on I guess, the person's environment they were brought up. Because, I mean, you get a lot of globe believers are conspiracy theorists and they don't believe in the flat earth. So, yeah, it's it's difficult. You know what I mean? You can't really say for one person what's going to be for the other. Yeah, of course. It's not a perfect correlation. A lot of people would say that there is some kind of correlation there, but I don't have any data on that. So who knows? Like I said, I believed in things that turned out not to be true and they're conspiracy type of things. Do you ever believe in something that turned out to be a conspiracy and then you realize what you thought it was? Star Wars. <laughs> what do you mean, Star Wars? <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I would say... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wanted to, to join the rebellion, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I, I wouldn't really say uh, the things I was more into kind of are still just classified as conspiracies. But I mean, what do you classify as conspiracy really these days? I mean, if you look, for instance, into 9-11 and things, there's a lot of evidence which points to it being a botched thing. You know, it's actually a planned thing. I'm not going to go and really go out of my way to present something because it's not my passion. You know what I mean? That's what I say. It's not something I'm going to really be able to talk about. But uh, no, I don't think there's really anything that I'm looking at. I mean, like I do believe there's such things as demons and stuff. Some people see that as a, you know, a type of, uh, if you look at ghost hunting, for instance, people think, okay, that might be a conspiracy. You know, these people are just, nutters the conspiracy theorists looking at uh ekg you know mp monitors and stuff and saying there's ghosts and all this i don't believe in ghosts and anything that's total bullshit but i do know based on personal experience there's demons and things i mean i've had literal like i said i've actually had interactions with the spiritual realm you could say so to me that's very real but I wouldn't classify it as conspiratorial, but to some people it would be for them because it's something they don't understand. Ghosts or demons, either one, I wouldn't consider that a conspiracy. I think people just believe it or not. It's not like someone's trying to keep the truth from everyone. But, you know, there are things like you said, 9-11, moon landing, of course. Yeah, the moon landing was one of those that even when I was a global store as well, there was something I'm like, hang on, something's just off here, you know what I mean? And that's something that kind of stuck with me. But it, uh, it wasn't something I took serious. It's not something like I said, oh, I'm going to debate someone or anything. It's just, uh, it doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? They went to the moon or not. What what does it bother me? But now it's like, yeah, I know they can't go because they can't violate natural law. So <laughs> obviously it doesn't doesn't gel. Can I ask you a question though? Of course. Well, what keeps you from the flat earth though? Well, Everything seems to be pretty well explained by the globe map. I've studied physics, astrobiology, astronomy, just as a hobby, but I've taken the courses in physics and done the gravitational experiments and learned the equations and derived the equations. Everything works. Everything really works. And to my mind, there's just absolutely no reason to question any of it because it all works. Yeah. Right? We have the most amazing technology and satellites and it's just too much. Like I would need a lot, a lot of evidence that would one have to explain the world that we observe better than the globe model in every way. But the globe model seems to do it perfectly. And then if there is a cover up of, of any kind, that requires a lot of evidence and explanation and motive. Like I don't see any of that. Yeah. So like you said, you believe people are doing a job honestly. But why would anyone have them do all this? this? Without the motive, I can't get behind it. Yeah, we can't really divine someone's motives. But uh, definitely one of the itching points, I'd say, based on it is to keep God away. I mean, they want to separate God. Because if you look into the history of even how the, the heliocentric uh, model was introduced, it came, it came from uh, the Jesuits, from the, from the Masons, you know, people staunchly into worshiping the sun. So based on my spiritual path, I understand, okay, you get 
you know, you get one side and you get the other side, good and evil, you get, you know, the yin and yang kind of thing. Sure. And the heliocentric model is Satan's religion, if I have to place it that way, because it's the 180 perversion of everything that God made. God's character is he created you to be um, close to him, to have a relationship with him. You know, he wants to be personal with you. But everything based on heliocentric is you have to push God as far away as possible. You don't have a creator. You don't have uh, that supernatural link with God. You just, by chance, just a speck of dust, you know, for, that just came from nothing. So to me, it's, I would say it's a spiritual thing. And uh, that kind of, that's how I would say it is. So you think people believing that the earth is a globe makes them less likely to believe in God and love God compared to if the earth was flat? Oh, yeah, definitely. I've seen many Christians even fall away from their faith because of heliocentrism, because they look into the Bible, and especially once they get, um, like I said, they get exposed to the flat earth stuff. And they read the Bible and they see, but yeah, the Bible's saying, and it's explaining a flat earth. I mean, a lot of atheist scholars even say, yeah, the Bible's a flat earth book. I mean, and they're saying, well, if I can't trust my Bible, then how can I know God's real? You know what I mean? And then they roll the throw away their faith. And then they follow the heliocentric model, which is literally um, people uh, following man over God. You know what I mean? So... That's why I think it, it's definitely a spiritual thing got to do with this, where people decide, well, if I take God or I take what man say, but I'll take man because it's scientifically validated. You know what I mean? But there are a lot of low birthers that are religious. I'd say most oh, yeah, yeah. of the world is that way. So, But I see what you're saying. If there's contradictions between the, the model and the Bible, it could lead to people like not so much believing the Bible. Exactly. It, it, it gives them shaky ground kind of thing. And I've also seen the antithesis of that. Um, when people first get to the flat earth, they were atheists, then they become Christians. That uh, brings them closer to God. So, yeah, it's it can go both ways. You do get a lot of hate. I mean, from, uh, <laughs> I know it's it's, it's got to be tough to be a flat earther. Tell me about like your experience in real life. Do do most people that know you know you're a flat earther? Yeah, a lot of. Yeah, a lot of them do. They don't doesn't bother them. I mean, I'm still me, just normal people. That's what I say where you get the normal globies that just doesn't bother them. They're just like, oh yeah, that's cool, you know. And they don't really want to talk about it, they don't really care, it doesn't bother them. Uh, and then you get those that are like, Oh, you're just weird, and you know, they just I don't want to do anything with you, kind of thing. But most of the people I interact with are no, it's cool. I mean, I've interacted with some people that's like, Oh, really? Yeah, me too. I'm also flat earther, and I don't know, kind of thing, you know, that's but uh I think when it comes on the internet, it's a whole different ball game than talking to a person and, you know, just face to face because I don't know, people on the internet can sort of have a, a online persona. They, they don't have to be their self hundred percent. You know what I mean? I think you also know it's different talking to someone face to face. Uh, you can be yourself. Whereas when you're like talking on the internet, you can sort of hide behind the screen kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't be so rude to each other if they were face to face, I suppose. And oh yeah, yeah. would probably get along just fine in many cases. But, but I mean, even with me, when I usually talk face to face, I am kind of calm, like we're talking now, kind of thing, because I understand uh, it's a different type of uh, environment you're talking. I mean, if I'm, I can get comfortable on the internet and just you know slag people off and stuff, but that's. It's like you dish it out, I can dish it back, kind of thing. You know, you get you get used to it on the internet, like it's the the culture, you know. But when you're like talking face to face, you kind of show more respect. You know, it's like yeah, I respect what you're saying, kind of thing. This is my argument, and then if you leave it by that, you leave it like that. But when you're on the internet, you can you can still go on and say ah, you know, this guy is just ignoring me. He's being dishonest, kind of thing. You know what I mean? So I think the the, the internet culture is different to talking to people just face-to-face -face kind of thing oh yeah i get along with everyone in real life like no, <laughs> never have any kind mm. of conversation people you know but oh my goodness in the comments man if you will, <laughs> people i try just because i made a video about uh, the illuminati people uh people absolutely say the worst things sometimes oh yeah yeah i yeah. mean i've got people telling me i'm a child abuser I'm telling me i'm beating my wife you know I, I get people literally yeah i mean 
if you don't believe, you know, just because we have different views, it doesn't give you the right to, but that's, that's what I say. That's when it comes different to the, the internet culture because it's, they can sort of hide behind their keyboard and they can just type it out kind of thing. But I can guarantee you 99% of the time, those same people won't stand face to face with you and say that. I've never heard it in real life. <laughs> exactly. That's you what I'm saying. Either, yeah. They can have their own kind of internet persona kind of thing. And they, they're just different. You know, Nathan has a reputation for debating aggressively or abrasively, mm -hmm. but he also reacted to my video with Dan and was rather kind to me, at least throughout the video. And then in, after the video, leave me some comments and we actually went back and forth. And then if you watch him, he's a completely different person when he's not debating in some of his streams and things like that. So I think Nathan is just one of the most passionate <laughs> when yeah, it comes very to passionate. debate and that just comes out in the debate i feel like i could get along with nathan great and rely like you know i think most people would oh, that's what i'm saying everybody has their weird persona when you're like debating and things compared yeah. to backstage then people have the they're more civilized <laughs> it's with that way i mean i've seen it from even the most even sean hawkins believe it or not i've seen him be more civilized backstage before we have a debate or something yeah it's it's like some switch clicks when <laughs> When people start debating, I don't know. I, th um, I, th I think it'll be an interesting conversation if we all had to get together or some around some table conference and just have a discussion, you know, like like we're having now. I it, think it'd be interesting conversation. It'd be different. If it ever ha happened in person, that would be amazing. Yeah. I'd be up for it. Have you ever been to the States? No, never been out of Africa though. I would love to go and travel. It's just very difficult with the children and wife and obligations and stuff, so... Uh, yeah. Hopefully when I'm big. <laughs> I hope it happens for you, man. I hope it happens for you. And if you ever if you ever do come to New York, oh, hopefully yeah. you'll email me and say you're coming in town. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that was great. Thank you for making the time for me. But we should do this again, actually. I wish your channel all the luck. Likewise. Obviously, we don't agree with everything as well, but uh, definitely yeah. respect you, man. Yeah, likewise. We'll speak again uh, down the road. I'd like that. Definitely. All right, this is the end. If you made it this far, here are a couple of other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Alexa, define anti-flat earther. From mylanta.com.au, the anti-flatulent quickly relieves wind pain by dissipating excess gas bubbles in the stomach. Alexa, define anti-flat earther. From buzzworthy.com. Within the scientific community, there exists a shorthand for idiocy and ignorance that has become widely adopted as a pejorative against people who refuse to accept empirical evidence and turn instead to conspiratorial beliefs, flat earthers. <laughs> <laughs>